All right, so we got the uh, Yamaha O2R96 digital console here, um, capable of 24-bit, 96 kilohertz uh, sample rate. It is actually a 56-channel console, even though we only have 24 faders across the uh, console. We actually work in layers on this board, so depending on uh, if we have the first layer or the second layer, actually establishes which channels we're controlling. So even though we only have 24 faders here, we actually do end up working with 56 channels on this console. Um, we have 16 mic inputs available, uh, 24 line inputs. Phantom power turns on individually for each channel, so every single microphone input has its own phantom power switch, as well as its own insert point and its own pad button to drop the signal down. Um, it has eight buses, uh, but it uses the tri-bus system just like the analog 8-bus console. So even though we only have 8 buses, we can actually route to 24 inputs in Pro Tools. All right, so the tri-bus system, bus 1 would feed Pro Tools input 1, input 9, and input 17. Bus 2 would feed uh, Pro Tools input 2, 10, and 18, and on down the line. So each bus actually feeds 3 different inputs for Pro Tools. Um, we have 8 aux sends available on every channel. Um, and again, 16 insert points um, and one designated Q output for the headphone mix. Yep. So, patch bay here for the O2R studio in SAE Atlanta. Um, so the very top row that we're seeing right here is the tie lines connecting from the two live rooms that we have. Um, studio 8 live room, Studio 9 live room. The top row here is normal to the bottom row. So the tie lines, whenever you plug a microphone into the panel in the live room, will automatically show up at the same numbered input on the O2R console. All right, moving down, we have our insert sends and returns. These are the 16 that I mentioned that are only capable to be used pre-tape in our setup. Um, so when you're using these um, in a tracking situation, you'll be patching into the outboard gear that we have on the right side of the console, and the outboard gear connections on the patch bay are over here on the bottom left. Outboard gear inputs and outboard gear outputs for the insert sends and returns. Omni outs that we have right here are what the console is using to feed all of the different speakers in the room since we're set up for surround sound. We see we have left, right, center, LFE, which is your subwoofer, left surround, and right surround. So these are the actual outputs of the board that are feeding the um, speakers in the room. So if you needed to patch signal in specifically to any of these speakers, that's where you could access them on the patch bay. So from that, we have our console main out, studio out, and phones out. Main out is where you'll be patching in to actually record your final mix off of the console into your uh, laptop. And the console studio out is actually the output that we're using for our headphone mixes in this room. So you can see if we go from the top row to the bottom, as I mentioned before, top row is normal to the bottom. Panel cues, those are your actual cue connections in the live room on the XLR panel out there. All right. So we got our master section over here for the Yamaha O2R. So setting up the master section on this board, take our master fader, push that up to all the way to the top is unity gain. There's basically no positive gain on this master fader. Um, and this is the only fader on the console that has actually dedicated to only control one thing. All, right? all the other faders can be swapped depending on what layers we're actually working on. Master fader here is always the master fader. It will never change what it's controlling. Um, above that, we have our actual layer selections. As I mentioned, this is a split bus console, so layers 1 through 24 will be our input section that actually has our microphone connections coming in. We'll use these to route to Pro Tools. 25 through 48 is our monitor layer, so that's where all of the audio from Pro Tools will play back to the board on 25 through 48. The master layer can, um, contains the master aux sends master bus outputs, as well as channels 49 through 56, which we actually use for effects returns in this room. And then the fourth layer, the remote layer, is actually a remote control layer for Pro Tools. So anything I do on the faders in the remote control layer is actually affecting the faders in Pro Tools and not actually controlling the audio on the console itself. All right, so moving over to the side over here, this is kind of all of our controls for manipulating anything that we have on the screen over here. All right, so if we need to move the cursor around, scroll up or down on the menus that we have. All, right, all of that will be controlled with the jog wheel and the um, crosshair controls that we have right here. 
Uh, above that, we have our MIDI machine control to control Pro Tools, so you can actually use your stop, play, record, rewind, and fast forward to control playback from Pro Tools. And then up here is kind of the uh, control room section for the Yamaha O2R. So for our speakers in here, we're using our surround monitor for our actual volume control of the speakers. We should always be monitoring bus on the surround options. That's, think of that as the master stereo bus. That's what we want to be listening to on the speakers. And then up top, the studio outputs are what we're using for our aux sends, or sorry, for our headphone mix. So we always use, be using auxes 7 and 8 for the studio outputs for our Q sends. So make sure you always have aux 7 and 8 selected here. All right, and then we want to give a little level to the studio level here so that when we send signal out to the Q output for the headphones, they'll actually be getting some volume. And then at the very, very top, we have our talkback level. So make sure we turn that up and the talkback microphone is actually built into the console right underneath of the talkback level right there. So I want to talk about the scenes now that we have on the Yamaha O2R. Um, this is one of the big advantages that you have with a digital console versus an analog console. The scenes are basically snapshots of your mix. When you store a scene, you're storing all of your fader positions, your pans, your mutes, all of your EQ, compression, all of your effect settings. Basically a snapshot of your mix that you can recall at any time. So, in order to either load up or create a new scene, we need to hit our display access button, the scene section here, and that will bring it up onto the screen. So on the screen here, basically what we're seeing is a list of all of the scenes that have been stored here. So the initial data is basically a completely zeroed out scene. If you think of the console as it would be when it was completely normaled, that's what the initial data is. So if we want to make a new scene, I'm basically going to use our jog wheel and find an empty scene. There we go. So the empty scene will say no data. So on the left hand side, make sure that we have the store button highlighted and hit enter and that'll let us store a new scene and we will go in and rename it. Let's call this one O2R tutorial scene. All right, and then hit OK to store our scene. So now it's been stored at scene number 41. O2R tutorial is the name of it. So if I need to come back to this at any time, I can again just go back and highlight scene 41, and then this time hit Recall, and that will bring my scene back up. Yep. Okay, so we've got our microphone now patched into console mic input number one on the patch bay. So I'm gonna show you guys now how to actually route your signal around on the O2R. So we'll come back over to the console now. And in our layer section over here, right above the master fader, we want to make sure we have layer 1 through 24 selected. That's our input layer, our pre-tape layer. So this is where we're going to actually go and route the signal into Pro Tools. So I've got it patched into mic input number 1. So if we look at the top left of the console, input number 1 right here, this is where I was saying we have individual phantom power for each channel, pad for it, our preamp to turn up and down, as well as turning the insert point on or off. So now we're going to go down here to channel 1 on the console. Make sure we have that channel selected. And then up on the selected channel section next to the screen we have our routing matrix right here. So just like the bus assign that you have on a lot of analog consoles. So I don't want to route this to the main stereo bus. I want to route it to Pro Tools via bus 1. Okay, And then raise up fader on channel number one. And now if we look at Pro Tools, we can see we have signal coming into Pro Tools. So we've got our signal patched into the console, routed to Pro Tools input one via bus number one, and now we need to bring it back in the monitor section so that we can actually hear it in the main mix. So to do that, we go back to our layer selection above the master fader on the console here, and we go to channels 25 through 48. All right, so the way that's set up is Pro Tools Output 1 returns to channel 25. Pro Tools Output 24 will be coming back on channel 48. So since we're using Pro Tools Output 1, we're going to have it right here on channel 25. So we'll raise up our fader here. And if we look at our meter at the top of the O2R, we can see we're getting level into the main mix. So if I just turn up my monitors on the speakers here, I can actually hear the microphone coming out. All right, so we've got our signal routed to Pro Tools. We've got it coming back onto the board. So far, so good. 
All right. Also, we need to be able to set up a headphone mix so that our artists can hear the microphone when they're in the live room. So, as we mentioned on the studio outputs and the master section, we're using auxes 7 and 8 for our headphone mixes. So to route aux 7 and 8 on this console, since we don't really have dedicated aux controls like you would have on an analog console, our faders actually start playing uh, multiple roles here. So not only do we have the multiple layers, 1 through 24, 25 through 48, and our master layer, but our faders can also control our aux sends as well. So what we want to do is go up to our fader mode that we have up top here. And instead of controlling the fader for the channel, we want to control the aux for the channel and make sure that we go and select aux 7 first and then we'll do aux 8 afterwards. All right, so now that I've selected aux for my fader mode and aux 7, now my fader on the channel is actually controlling descend for aux 7. So it's no longer controlling the level in the main mix, but it's actually controlling the level in the headphone mix. All right, now I'll go and select aux 8. Go back down to channel 25, raise the fader up. So now I've turned up aux send 7 and aux send 8 for my headphone mix. But headphone mixes should always be pre-fader. All right, so we need to now make our auxes pre-fader um, for the headphone mix. So we hit our display access button on our aux select here. And when we look at the screen, we can see that we're looking at aux 8. So we want to make it pre-fader. If we look down at the bottom right here, we see you have this global pre. If we turn that on, that's going to make all of the aux 8 sends pre-fader on the entire console. We want to do the same thing for aux 7. So we'll select aux 7, global pre-fader, and there we are. We've got our headphone mix good to go. So now that we've got our signal routed to Pro Tools and we've got it coming back on the board, now we want to actually set up a um, EQ on our, on our post-tape channel. So remember, since this is a split bus console, all of our pre-tape channels will be 1 through 24, post-tape will be 25 through 48. So I'm working on channel 25, so I want to make sure I select that channel, and then go over to my EQ section to the right of the screen here and display the EQ. So I'm actually seeing my equalizer for channel 25 on the screen right there. All right, so we can control the um, levels of the EQ using our scrub wheel and all the crosshair controls. Or if we go back over to our EQ section here next to the screen, we actually have the EQ controls for whatever channel is selected. Remember, you always got to keep track of what channel is selected as well as what layer you're working on. So just as I could control it with the scroll wheel, I can go here and I can control my levels with the encoders that we have in the EQ section also. All right. So this is actually a, a fairly powerful EQ because each band can actually do multiple things. So for instance, the low, the low uh, band EQ right here can be either a low shelf or a parametric EQ. If we can get a uh, better view of it here. All right, so we have low shelf, or we can go fully parametric with it, with full bandwidth control. Or if we turn the cue all the way to the side, we actually end up with a high pass filter. All right, so the, the low band EQ on here is actually three types. It can be a high pass filter, a fully parametric EQ, or a low shelf EQ. And the high band has the same idea. It can either be a high shelf EQ, fully parametric EQ, or a low pass filter. Right, and then your low mid and high mid bands are both fully parametric. So a lot of different EQ capabilities of this console and all the EQs can be automated also. All right, so now to open up a compressor on channel 25. Again, make sure you have channel 25 selected. All right, and then we go up to our dynamic section, again to the right of the screen, hit our display axis, so we can actually see all of our controls for our compressor here. All right, so every channel on this console has both an, a compressor and a gate, as well as an EQ. So the compressor has to actually be activated on the bottom left there before you can use it for anything. And then you have all of your standard uh, compressor controls that you'd normally be working with. We have our threshold, ratio, gain reduction, um, 
meters, which are actually over here on the right hand side. Um, attack controls, release controls, uh, soft knee, hard knee controls, as well as makeup gain. All right, and then if we look across the bottom of the screen here, we can see we have the compressor edit tab, which is active right now. So if we then wanted to activate the gate, we would need to use the little function buttons underneath the screen, F1, F2, F3, F4, we'll select which tab is on screen right now. So if we hit F1, we'll bring up our gate, and we have basically very similar controls with a gate as you would have with a compressor, so we need to actually activate it. And then we have our threshold controls, range controls, which is how far the um, gate will actually drop the level of the material in dB when the gate closes, the attack time, how fast the gate opens, decay, which is basically the release time of the gate, and the hold time, which will hold the gate open for a certain amount of time after the levels drop back below the threshold. Alright, so to set up time-based effects on the O2R, again, the faders kind of do uh, multiple jobs, so we want to have our fader control our aux sense. So first thing I'm going to do is change my fader mode again from fader over to aux, and in this case I'm going to use aux 1 to send to my time-based effect. So if we look down at the channel 25 here, I'm going to flip back and forth between fader and aux. So when I'm on fader, I'm looking at the actual level of the channel in the main mix. When I hit aux, now this is actually controlling the level going to aux send number one. So to see our effects, we have just underneath the fader mode, we have the actual effects plug-in section right here. So if we hit our display axis, we can bring that up on the screen. And what we have right here now is the all the controls set up for this particular reverb that's set on the um, uh, first effect unit. We have four different time-based effects units that we can use on this console. So if we select that patch button right there, we can actually see what is essentially the digital patch bay here. Since everything is built into the console, we obviously don't have to actually patch in our reverb and delay effects into the mix, um, but digitally we still need to have everything routed from our aux send into the effect unit and then out from the effect unit we can see here it's going to return on channels 49 and 50. So if I go back up to the effect one edit button right there brings me back to that screen where I can change all the controls. If I want to change the actual patch I can go up to the library button and we can see all of the different effects that we have available on the O2R console right here. So I'm going to pull up a mono delay hit recall to pull that effect up alright and so now we essentially have that pulled up on there so if we look at our effects edit screen again right we can see we've got signal coming in so we know we've got everything routed in from aux one we're getting signal into the effects unit so now we need to bring that effect back into the main mix so we can actually hear it in the speakers all right. So again, if we go back to that patch screen, we can see that this particular effect, the mono delay, is going to be coming back on channels 49 and 50. So first thing I want to do is switch over to my master layer, which again is right above the master fader. So right now I'm on layer 25 through 48, so I'm going to switch that over to the master layer. And then I'm going to go back over to my fader mode and switch it instead of controlling the aux send I want my faders to actually be controlling the level of this channel in the main mix so I'll go back down to my faders here 49 and 50 are the two left faders so when I pull these up I now have the effect in the main mix All right. so last thing is when the singer is using this they might want to actually have the effect in their headphone mix All right. so to do that one more time, we're going to change our fader control to aux, and we're using auxes 7 and 8 for our headphone mix. So I'll select aux 7 and turn up channel 49, aux 7 for the left side of the headphone mix, and then I will select aux 8, and I will turn up channel 50 for the right side of the headphone mix. Alright, so now I'm going to show you guys how to do the automation on the Yamaha O2R. So, a couple of things you want to set up before you actually start doing your automation. Number one is you want to go back to the scene 
hit display access to bring it up and make sure you store the scene one more time because when you start your automation what it's going to do is load up the scene when it starts the automation so if you haven't stored it it's going to revert back to whatever it was the last time you saved your scene so make sure you do this first and then when we go to Pro Tools bring up the transport window and make sure that Pro Tools is generating MIDI time code that's how we actually get the synchronization between Pro Tools and the O2R if that little Gen MTC button is not turned on, we will not have any movement on the O2R and you won't get any automation done. All right. So once those two things are set up, then we can go to the Auto Mix menu on the O2R, which if we look at the top left in the Display Access section, it's the very top left button, Auto Mix. Hit that and bring it up onto the screen. So what we need to do now is go right where it says Auto Mix Disabled. We need to make sure we enable. Auto mix, that's all of our automation on here. And then we need to make a new auto mix. Right? Just confirm yes. And then to the left of that, where this little overwrite section, we have to tell the O2R exactly what it is that we want to automate. So in this situation, I'm going to do the fader, and I'm going to do the on, which is basically on off, that's your mute button on the O2R. So I'm going to do fader and mute automation. Okay. Go down and record arm the automation and then go to the tracks that you want to automate right above the faders and above the select button we have these actual auto buttons so I'll automate say these four channels when you got the red light like that that means the automation is armed for that channel so when I hit play in Pro Tools it's going to start recording automation for those channels All right. so once all this is set up hit play in Pro Tools get that time code moving you should see time code moving on the screen of the O2R on the top right here also as long as everything is working there, now we can go down and actually do our fader movements and our mutes on and off. And you can see the auto buttons start blinking, showing that something's actually been recorded onto these channels for automation. Once you're done with your automation pass, hit stop in Pro Tools and you'll get a message to pop up to update the auto mix on the O2R. If you want to keep what you did, make sure you hit yes. If you messed up and you want to start over, just hit no. All right, now that the auto mix has been updated, we can just bring it back to the beginning in Pro Tools, hit play again, and we'll see our fader movements and all of our on and off information going too. So we'll give it a couple seconds to reach where I actually started doing the fader rides. And we get the ghost in the machine moving everything for us here. So I got our fader rides, and then we have some on and off mutes happening up top. All right, and that's it. So, last thing though, once all your automation is complete, we need to store our automation just like we store a scene. So again, we look at the tabs, wrong one, we look at the tabs across the bottom of the screen, we want to go to memory. So that's F2 to take us to the memory screen, and it looks a lot like the scenes. So I've already made an O2R tutorial auto mix, so I'm just going to store my auto mix on top of that one that I already created. All right, now my automation is saved. Anytime I reload my scene, I can reload my auto mix and have everything play back exactly the same way every single time. So when you're done with uh, your work on the O2R for the day, just like in any other studio, we need to normal the console. So in order to do that, we're going to bring up our scene memory onto the display. All right, so I'm good. one last time, just to be safe, I'm gonna store the scene that I've been working on just to make sure that everything that I've done up to this point is stored. But to normalize this console, it couldn't be any easier. We scroll all the way down to scene zero, which is initial data. Hit recall for initial data. And that's it. Board is normal.